But so, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Kevin Martin again, uh, alongside good old Justin Dezen, JD thank you. Sloan. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we're here getting ready on the road to Franklin, Kentucky, for another great night of action. It's WrestleMania weekend, Justin. It is, yes, uh, yes. And we're celebrating it with some wrestling up in Franklin, Kentucky, presented by AWA New South. Make sure to check them out every first and third Friday, 7.30 p.m. bell time at the New South Arena. And you can follow along on WrestleTopia TV at youtube.com forward slash WrestleTopia TV. Um, but I wanted you to hit record because uh, go ahead and explain the whole OVW trade school Yeah, so from, from what I read, it's like, <laughs> it's basically Al is like trying to obviously get more people to come train over at OVW. But what's, what a lot of people are doing is they they can't go to OVW because it costs so much. So, like, it costs, like, I, th- like, I think, like, $2,000 uh-huh. to train there. Uh-huh. Um, but a lot of people can't pay that. Right. So what they're doing is trying to form it into a trade school. And what they'll do, they'll not only teach wrestling, they'll teach all aspects of the business. So, like, they'll... Production. Course, yeah, and... production, writing. So they'll learn English, business, finance, marketing, like how to oh, do all really? that, yeah. So it's literal. It's a literal school, and the, the certificate you get, it's like a two, you know, the two year certificate because uh-huh. it's a two year long gimmick, and you'd get a degree per se in sports entertainment and professional wrestling. Really? Yes, dude, the, that's crazy. The, the first ever like college like degree. I saw. I saw the post. You know, I saw the the uh, press release or whatever about it. Um, but I didn't click on it to see what it what it was. I mean, that's that's a that's a very interesting idea. What do you think about that? Being like both of us, you know, we're in different aspects of wrestling other than being inside the ring. Right. I mean, it is a good idea, right? To to train an announcer, to train production. Yeah. To, I mean, you want there, there's you wanna, more to wrestling than just wrestlers. Yeah. What, what I was always told is that you know if you learn all roles of the business, you'll always have a job right, in the business. Right. So. The idea, I guess, here is that they want to teach all aspects of the business. And so I'm actually pulling up the article now. Uh-huh. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's a really great idea by Al to try and attract more attention to it. They're actually doing a press conference tomorrow at WrestleCon. Oh, really? Yeah. So they're going to be talking about it, I assume, out there. It is a little bit carny, isn't it? I well, mean, well, it, if you, it's, if you it's, think about it. it yeah, it, it is, it, it's a little carny, but it's being shoot certified by the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't make it a, tra- a legal trade school and get scholarships and federal aid and all that. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're getting it certified by the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And, I mean, it, it gives it gives people an opportunity to get, like, a student loan yeah. to, to go to it. Or maybe even, you know, in the future, yeah. maybe there'll be grants yeah. and stuff. This is what it says here. Ohio Valley Wrestling is applying to become the first wrestling school to earn state accreditation. In addition to learning sport, students will study English, finance, business, marketing, and television production. The president of uh, Gladiator Sports Network, Chad Miller said they'll be able to get behind the camera, they'll be able to write, be a creative writer, and they'll be able to be a producer, a director, an event manager by the time they're done. Oh, wow. So, I mean, those are, honestly, I mean, think about running a show. Yeah. Okay, from, from start to end. You've got to find a building. You've got to, you, you have all these different contacts. You know, event planning is probably, that's the one thing that promoters probably need to know the most because you've got to be able to get all these different things from insurance to, you know, you got to rent sound systems yeah. and all these different things have to come into play and you've got to be on your game in order to actually pull off a legitimate good show. Now, now, do you think this is going to open the door for a lot of people that think, okay, well now I've learned all this stuff, so now I'm going to go do it and be like a shitty promoter. And... I don't think that there's any way to stop that from anything. Yeah. You know, like, I don't think that this is going to necessarily promote that more so than just a regular wrestling school. Or, you know, your average dude that's watching on his couch that, you know, hit, hits the lottery for 50 grand. Yeah. They think they, they can do it just because they've watched it and they, they have an opinion on it, you know? So I don't think there's really, there's, we'll never get out of, they'll never not be shitty promoters that don't know what the fuck they're doing. Right. That's just never going to happen. I think it's an interesting idea. I would like to see how well it does because I, I like this idea of like, hey, I can apply for a government grant to go to school. And basically and, and, train and to be a wrestler. Yeah. Tr- learn production, yeah. you, you know, video production. All while training to be a wrestler. Right, at the same time. And it's a, and so according to them, it's a two-year two program. 
It's a two-year program, 60 credit hours, which is typical, you know, certification for any college or whatever. Uh Um, And then, of course, with them, if they get certified, which I'm I'm sure they're getting accredited by the state of of Kentucky by now. Like, that's what the press conference is going to be tomorrow. Right, right. Um, But basically what it says here, once OVW receives final approval from the state, students will be able to apply in May for the full semester... And accreditation will make it possible for students to apply for financial aid and scholarships, which breaks down a barrier that keeps some wrestlers on the sidelines. Huh. So, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Personally, for me, like, someone who's always wanted to, like, learn every aspect of the business, um, of course, i am kind of got my hand in just right. about everything right. by now. But, like, for someone that was like me, like, five years ago, when I was first, like, learning about independent wrestling, you know, that's something that's, like, a dream come true. Sure. Yeah. I could get a legitimate college degree... In professional wrestling, yeah. which is a which is cool in a way, it's yeah. kind of cool. Just yeah, which is which is a you know a choreographed sport. Right. So I'm getting a degree in something that's not exactly all the way real. I would say the the biggest pitfall with this is, but it's so specialized. Well, the OVW, I, I would the biggest pitfall right now. Now, if like OVW can have these opportunities where. Promoters from around the world come and, and look well, at OVW talent. Yeah. Um, but right now, you know, OVW of today is not the same OVW that it was in 2001, 2002, 2003. Right. It's not as, it, you, you, you it's, know, a lot of people are like, OVW's still around? Like, like you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I know a lot of guys, we, we know a lot of people that work uh, in OVW. OVW. Yeah. And, and they're all great professional wrestlers and they're great but they were not they weren't trained in OVW yeah you, you know and I honestly I can't tell you who the last the last name that's making Actually, waves yeah. that came from OVW I mean right now I mean I of course this is a kind of a cheap plug but the tried and true women's champion Kelly Young was trained at OVW okay okay and she's uh she's all right she's yeah, doing great yeah. she's doing great for herself um, you know, big. She's a big name over there, over in Louisville. So she's a big name on Instagram. Yeah, apparently so. Got a lot of followers. Yeah. So which she's is doing, important. Yeah, absolutely. Twenty nineteen. Absolutely. <laughs> Your follower base is like the. You, you can be the shittiest wrestler. Yeah. But if you have followers, we can make you something, brother. Yeah. Um, so it is WrestleMania weekend. Um, you've watched a few shows. Uh, let, Tell, tell me about Bloodsport. I haven't watched anything yet. Bloodsport is one of the shows that I do actually so, plan on sitting down to watch. Yeah, so I was watching it last night because I was really intrigued by it. Because uh-huh. I, I was going through my fight app, and I was like, well, what's something I can watch? Because I still have a bunch of credit from the, right, right. the best of the best days. Yeah. And so I was looking through it, and I'm like, huh, Bloodsport. Now, so I was reading about it, and it's like a crossover, like MMA, pro yeah. wrestling deal. And I'm like, huh, sounds interesting. And I saw pictures on Twitter. From earlier in the day about it, like oh, there's no ropes on this ring. Mm-hmm. There and the the rules are like you have to win by knockout or submission. So it's like a shoot fight. Yeah, last year's was Matt Riddell's. Yeah, it was Matt Riddell's blood sport. This year, it's Josh Barnett. It's Josh Barnett. Yeah, and so I was watching it and I was kind of hyped up for the Frank Mir Dan uh-huh. Severn deal. Yeah, and that was really cool to watch. And uh, I'm not going to give any spoilers for you okay. or anything, but okay. um, but that's really cool. Uh, there, of course, there. How did Dan Severn look? Dan Severn doesn't look like he's aged. That's like, right. Yeah, I, I've seen pictures of him, and he looks like the same dude. Just his hair's like frosted. Yeah, like he, he looks like the same Dan Severn of the days of old. Yeah, and he's just killing it now. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm excited for you to check out that yeah. match. Um, of what course, about the Davy Boy Smith match? Was that a good one, brother? Davy Boy. Day, look, I, I I haven't watched a lot of Davy Boy. Honestly, uh-huh. I haven't seen. I've seen a few bits and pieces of him in New Japan uh-huh. with the Killer Elite Squad. Yeah, but um, oh, this motherfucker! Sorry, sorry, uh, fans watching at home. There's traffic in Nashville right now. Watching, they're watching this. Oh, uh, watching, listening, listening, listening. Whatever. But uh, <laughs> this would be this would be a podcast with Kevin and JD if we weren't in traffic <laughs> trying to get to Kentucky because that is probably the most important thing that I think, we do. I think that's the main episode <laughs> yeah. theme. But um, going back to it, um, yeah, Davy Boy, like, dude, he was amazing in that, in yeah. that match, man. Like, brother, there was a lot of rave reviews. Like, I think, like, Davy Boy was the star of the night, honestly, uh, for yeah. me. Fuck for yeah. me. Um, so, and of course, you guys obviously want to see Josh Barnett and all that. Right. So, right. it's definitely something to check out. If you haven't checked it out, I think it's worth spending the $15 to check it out if you just want to watch that. Um, but, of course, and, like, my friends over at Southern Underground Pro... 
killing it in that same venue uh-huh. earlier on in the day. With the family, what was fa- it called? Fa- family, family reunion? reunion. Yeah. yeah. I, man, Jesse's just such a fucking badass. He's just such a pimp, you know? Yeah. Everyone, make sure you check out Southern Underground Pro. Follow them, because that's such a pimp-ass company right there. I mean, you got to look at guys like, these are guys that are killing it in the South. Um, if you're like some, someone from up North and never seen a bit of what goes on down here, you got guys like Cabana Man Dan, you got guys like Mr. Brickster, O'Shea Edwards, that are just really doing great things down here. Kevin Koo. Brett Ison. Brett Ison, yep. Uh, Brett Ison, you know, Jesse's best friend. Uh-huh. They've they're Grew actually up together. Yeah, they're doing a docu series kind of sorta of, on a Oh really? Well it's like Twitter videos. Yeah. But yeah. like basically they're they've they videoed their like entire trip up there. Oh like, yeah. Bits and pieces yeah. of it. Go and, check that out. And, Go follow them. And Brett is just like <laughs> bullying the kid in the back seat. <laughs> oh, it's still real, damn it. <laughs> um but yeah, man. So definitely check out Family Union, check out Bloodsport, and then you have anything else you want to check out Mania Weekend? You know, um, both of the Joey Janela shows. I want to. I want to see those. One of our good friends is on that one of those yeah, shows. Yeah, um, uh, our uh, Doug Markham, yeah, the, a the, former the, guest of the, this this very podcast. He's a, he's the senior referee. Doug Markham is the shit. I mean, he really is. This dude is traveling everywhere. He works for everyone from MLW Joey Janela to uh, shows know, here in the South. AML, Wrestlecade, Southern Underground Pro. I mean, it, it, fucking Doug is everywhere. Doug Markham, the referee, yeah. has a line of t-shirts. <laughs> He's got multiple designs of t-shirts that sell out. That is how awesome Doug is. Doug is an awesome fucking dude. So so I was talking to Doug about this, like, you know, how he's just become this big thing, like, se- I say big thing, semi-big thing, uh-huh. or in the course of, like, a couple two years. Two years, two, three yeah. years, yeah. And, like, you know, when he started, you know, he was just working local shows down here. But, man, he was like, you know, he, he tried to do more, and he started getting out. And I think that's, even for a referee, you know, you can get out there and do things, and you could end up like Doug Markham, yeah. Yeah. freaking working over in freaking New York, yeah. Mania Weekend. Yep. Possibly a part of spring break uh, with old Joey Janella, so I, I he, he's kayfabing me on what he's doing. Like I don't <laughs> like he's he said there's something cool. Just watch and like so I guess we gotta tune Hell in and watch. Yeah, yeah I want to watch. You know, I want to part one, part two. I definitely want to watch those. I want to watch the MLW show, but I believe that's a TV taping. Yeah, it, uh, it was a TV. So taping. that'll come out later on. Um, I like ML, MLW a lot. Uh, I do want to watch the Impact show. I, I don't ever watch Impact stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I watched last year's uh, Impact show from WrestleCon. Um, I, for the most part, you know, the, like I don't know, Impact. There's a there's so much talent on that show. Yeah, they put on really good matches. Um, from being a part of the, the you know the production crew on on for a pay per view and tapings, le- legitimately, it's it's dude they do a good job. Yeah, I I, I hate that. Unfortunately, and this is what my big thing about AEW is has been for for so long, is not understanding what kind of talent they're going to have because Impact does so much great stuff, but there's nothing really that different about Impact that's different about MLW, right? Or that's different about AAW or different about AIW because or, it's the same, it's the same cycle pool. of talent. Yeah, you know, it's the pool, the same pool of talent. They're all working these badass, awesome fucking matches. But Impact doesn't have any, I, I, I don't know, brand recognition at know, all. I mean, I, I think it's it's more so the tarnished name yeah, of, yeah. of what Impact Wrestling is. Um, of course, you know you know the whole story. TNA turned to Impact, and yeah. when it turned to Impact, things went downhill. Um, but, you know, they're really, they're bringing the name back up. You know, I know several people that work there, and, you know, they're working their ass off to make it something again. Right. And so I I know they're doing great. Like I watched the United We Stand show. Uh-huh. It was really great matches and I commend everyone that did that worked on it. Um because it just shows that you know they're doing things like it was a sold out show. Yeah, yeah. It was a sold out show. Like and it mind you the show was at eleven o'clock Eastern time that right. night. Yeah. So yeah. it didn't end for them until two o'clock that morning. Or like one thirty that morning. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to watch that. I want to watch pa- the Pancakes and Pile Driver show. I-, I watched that last year. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, just, breakfast just, wrestling show. Yeah, I just I, I do a, like that's one of the things that uh, I love about the whole WrestleCon, WrestleMania weekend. You know, I'm going to tell you something funny. Um, so I don't currently have the WWE Network right as of right now. Yeah, you let um, that subscription expire, didn't you? Because it is connected 
to my PayPal. Oh boy! And I guess when my my due came up, yeah, um, no money about in the three about three months ago. I always have money in my PayPal. Now I don't always have a ton of money <laughs> or anything like that, but but I always have I have more than ten dollars. Yeah. At almost at almost any given time. But for some reason, when the payment due date came, I didn't. For, for whatever that reason. But this was like three months ago. Yeah. I didn't realize I didn't have the WWE Network until two days ago when I went to turn it on. Yeah, try to watch something? Yes. That is how little I watch that network. So so um, are you going to watch WrestleMania? Well, no. I, no, I haven't watched WrestleMania in, in years. So, uh, so especially this year's. Oh, uh, come on now. I, I'm not looking. There's nothing about a seven hour long and No, no it's, not, it's not seven. It's, it's five. It's, it's, it will be five <laughs> plus a two hour. Well, yeah, you don't really need to watch the pre show. I mean, that's just the matches bunch. on the on the show. Yeah, aren't they? yeah. So like, it's an hour. Look, I went to WrestleMania last year. It's literally an hour of them talking. Then they yeah, just squeeze I, yeah, another. I'm sure. But even uh, dude, I, I, there's nothing that makes you want to watch five hours right of the WrestleMania. Yeah. You know, and and honestly, none of the matches are that enticing to you. I, I may go back and watch the main event. Yeah. Um, I may watch that. What else? Uh, there's Triple H and Batista. Ah, man, dude. There's... I, I, you know what? I, I like Batista. Yeah. And I didn't used to like Batista. I wasn't a fan of his when he was a full-time wrestler. Yeah. Um, I do like him now. I think he's just a, such a well-versed actor, you know, that he's kind of just got you, like, when, when he's coming in, like, you know, it's like, of uh, course you, you know Batista of old. But, yeah. like, now I think he's just such a well-versed actor that he can take on any role there. Because right now, obviously, he's the heel in this whole storyline. Right. Um, but it's, like, it's a heel that's justified, but also he's the whiny bitch. Right. Because he didn't get what he wanted, and that's, and that's Triple H until now. Well, I think, which is, doesn't make sense because they've wrestled, I, don't, I can't tell you how many, how many times. But, but he says he wants to end his career that way. But so. I, what I like, I, I just like, I think Batista is like a big deal. Um, now, you know what's funny, though? I like him, his personality yeah. outside of wrestling. Right. You know, like I follow him on Twitter. and uh, So I, I, I like him. There's nothing, and I don't I don't hate Triple H. You know how some people hate Triple H? Well, I just, yeah, just hate the idea. I, I don't, I'm not like a... He's burying everybody. I'm not a Triple H. I, see, I don't, I, I really just don't even give a shit, to be honest. Yeah. Even if he is. Like, I don't have a visceral reaction to anyone, really. Yeah. I don't know Triple H. Um... So I don't have a legitimate feeling about him. Right. I'm not a fan of his, though, as far as his entering work. All right. Well, what about a Kurt Angle's farewell no. match? No. Unless, I mean... I know. It's got to be a swerve, bro. It's got to be a swerve. The, dude, uh, I, I swear, when I see him walk, yeah, it and it hurts me yeah, inside. It, this is He's gonna, in so much pain. Dude, this is going to be an unpopular opinion, and I'm going to say this right now. And if you hate me, send all your hate mail to <laughs> at KJM615 on Twitter. Yeah. But <laughs> I think, and this is sad to say, Kurt Angle was at his best when he was on painkillers and alcohol. Well, now, uh, yes. Because, but because, because he didn't feel it. it. That, yes, that, and also that was... He was ten years younger, but he didn't. Do you know feel, what I but mean? Yeah, but obviously he had his neck broken twice. Yeah, he didn't feel any of that shit until after the match. But think about his last year in TNA. His last year in TNA was fine. Yeah, he's dude. He's in his fifties. Right. With two broken necks. Yeah. With fusion all over his back. Yeah. And his hips you can and his see arms. it. Like his body's just arched his, in all kinds his of positions. His arms are in atrophy. Yeah. You know, he's legally prescribed the steroids he takes now. Yeah. To keep his arms from going. You know, have you ever seen the Paul Orndorff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what would happen to Kurt Angle's arm. Yeah. You know, and so he's broken down, dude. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just there's nothing about him in the ring. I just, and I don't dislike. The, you know how people hate the one-offs or the legends coming back? Yeah. Or, none of that shit bothers me, man. It really isn't. These guys are popular fucking people. They have name value. There is an absolute reason why The Undertaker is worth being on one match every year on WrestleMania. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. There is he is he That is valuable. There is nothing wrong with that. It does not bother me that he's an older guy. Wrestling, his body is broke down. And... Because of his age, I, his match is not going to be enjoyable. It's yeah. not going to be a fun I, I, match yeah, to watch. Yeah, because, like, you know, you see him walk down. Now, now, if he didn't do this, he did this farewell tour, per se, mm-hmm. like, oh, these certain matches where he was protected in. Right. Like, he did the six-man tags and all that right. stuff. So you never really got to see how bad off he really was. Oh, I heard that his match with Gable was not good. I mean, it was it was good for what it was. Uh-huh. It was a couple minutes. 
So, like, you know, it's he can't put on a 30-minute spectacular sure, anymore. Sure, That's what I mean, though. Like, I heard he was moving real slow. Well, th- that's why, slow like... Slow to get up. And, and, like, I think it's, like, kind of a reason why they kind of picked Corbin. Mm-hmm. Because Corbin works slow, and because he's, you know, he's that yeah. dirtbag heel that, you know, won't give you anything. That's why you got to do a headlock for... 25 minutes. Well, I mean, I don't think it's going to be 25 minutes. Easy now, brother. <laughs> Look, we got five hours to fill, but we got other matches to fill five hours. Um, but I but I also think that that's also a swerve. I really, right. I think the last match, in my honest opinion, is going to be Cena. That's my honest opinion. Right. Um, because that Cena's a guy that can, they can just work the crowd for a couple mm-hmm. minutes. They'll do a couple spots. Then they'll do the big moves. Call it one, two, three there. Either Angle wins, Cena wins, whatever. You know they have the farewell match that everyone wants to see, uh-huh. and it's not it's not that they know that oh this is going to be a five star classic. Kurt Angle is going to do a moon salt off the WrestleMania stage, but it's going to be a match where okay we get to see this one last time. This is really cool, right? I think right. that's what everyone's been griping about on social media, um, but, but everyone gripes on social media about WWE television nowadays, right? Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is like we want to see this match one last time. Well. And dude, I'll be happy to watch the the Twitter highlights of that. Yeah, I, that's not a match. That that is not a match that I'm worried about seeing. But uh, give, I, give me I, another one. But, all right, but other than the main event, uh, we got Roman. so far. I do want to see the main event. Yeah, that, I, I think that's it. gonna be like a 45 minute classic. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say, let's see, we got what else? We have Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre. Ah, oh, that's a hard one. Because Ro- Roman's hot off his leukemia issue. Uh, but he hasn't been booked in the greatest of senses either. Like, you think about it, he hasn't really done anything other than that one match I at Fastlane. You know, I, I don't I don't watch Raw or SmackDown, well, what, but I listen uh, yeah. I listen to the, the post show, yeah. the uh, Wei Ting and John Pollock yeah. post wrestling. I listen to their, their reviews every day the next day at, while I'm working. Um, and I, I honestly can't tell you that I, since. What was the last pay per view? Fastlane? Yeah. Or Fastlane was Okay. I can't think of anything I've heard Roman actually do since then. Yeah, because he hasn't done anything. He's been in so he did the one he did the match. He came back that following Monday uh-huh. and he got he got into it with Drew McIntyre and so they were gonna have a match that night. But then Drew McIntyre like attacked him and ba- gave him basically a quote unquote concussion. So he was oh. out for like the next week. And then the week after that, mind you, this is two weeks before Mania. Uh-huh. So two weeks before Mania, he does another promo backstage, gets attacked. Okay. So they haven't been doing anything with Roman to show that he has any kind of strength. He's just been beating him down, beating him down, trying to show that he's weaker after right. this leukemia thing. So um, now I also don't know how they've been booking Drew McIntyre. Um, Drew's is, is, been a bit more vicious of a heel. Is Drew going to beat Roman? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll not, tell you this: could, that match could, intrigues me because Drew, Drew. Put out Dean Ambrose. Uh-huh. Drew put out Dean, and then he did that in that Falls Count Anywhere match that ended up being a big Claymore kick off the stage. Um, I th- I think that will be a good. I think Reigns McIntyre will be a good match. Yeah. So we'll put that in the in uh, the maybe pile. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. Like I think the match will be really good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, winner. I I don't want to see. I don't even. I don't know, man. It's so hard because. Roman Roman Reigns. I mean, can he lose? He just. I don't think he can. I don't understand why McIntyre would lose though, uh, because McIntyre looks like the fucking world champion. Yeah, and you can, he looks like and, a motherfucking and, champion. But, but I don't know if you you see if you kill off his heat with Roman winning, then is he legitimate anymore? He can do all this shit, but still loses the big I, one. Yeah, or or does Roman Reigns lose? Right after his big leukemia thing, and not have a mania moment. Right, like it just—I don't know. It's, it doesn't seem to. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't book that match to be honest. <laughs> um, I think the match, like I, I think Roman Reigns is a, is a perfectly fine wrestler. I think yeah. he he is a, a fan. I mean, he way better than I am. <laughs> um, and I think Drew McIntyre is a is a very good wrestler with an incredible look. Yeah. Um, I if if I had a wrestling promotion, McIntyre would be my champion. Um, so I think that that match will be good. I guess I, I don't, I'm not invested enough in the storyline to really, I guess it doesn't matter who wins to me because I, I'm not invested in television. Yeah, so that's but, not fair for me to um, worry about. All right, well, so we we'll got, throw that yeah. in. I, I want to see that match. I don't want to see the, the main event. All right. The Miz and Shane McMahon in a Falls Count Anywhere match. No. All right, well. <laughs> all right, like, 
that's another match that I, I don't mind watching the uh, highlights on, on Twitter, Twitter of. Yeah. Um, I don't dislike Shane McMahon. I don't care for him that much. Um, the but Miz, I, I, the man, Miz has been doing great as a babyface in this. I field. like the Miz. I like the Miz, Miz. The Miz would be a great manager, in my opinion. I, I think, and I don't think he's a bad wrestler or anything like that. Um, he, watching him work though, just no longer does anything. I think me. he's one of the, but he's one of the very few wrestlers that have never really had an injury. Yeah. So like, he's worked in a way that's worked for him for years. Sure. And so, I've always liked him. I've always enjoyed him. I do think that he's run his course, though. I, I don't mean... I mean, who the fuck am I to say anybody yeah. has run their course? I'm just saying, in my opinion, I, I don't know if... Uh, I, I like him. I think he's a great heel. I haven't really seen any of his babyface stuff, but I think he would be a fantastic manager because yeah. he can bump and, and talk at the same time, right. you know? Um, I'm not interested in seeing that match. All right. Um, AJ Styles... Um, Versus Randy Orton. I don't. I don't care for Randy Orton. I mean, this is the feud, basically, from what I, from what I understand. Randy Orton, you know, WWE superstar all the way through. Uh-huh. AJ Styles, indie wrestler, uh-huh. never, never could have made it until now. You know. Oh yeah, it, uh, they brought up. Uh, oh uh, like, yeah, Orton's wellness. Yeah. So, so on. Yeah, they did the contract signing. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And, or no, it wasn't contract signing. It was the Kevin Owens show. And then they started getting into it on the mic. Yeah. And so a- AJ was like, yeah, while I was making $50 at the high schools, you were getting suspended for drug test violations. Right, right. And yeah. so I, and then that's when it got heated. And then Randy Orton said, ever since John Cena left, you've just been molded into WWE's corporate bitch. So I don't like Orton. I've never enjoyed I, it. I've I, never enjoyed his work. I've liked his work. I think he's not. And, and he's an this, acquired taste. And this might be... Horrible for me to say. Oh boy! But I think AJ Styles is incredibly bland since he's come to the WWE. Really? Incredibly. Um, he used to be one of my favorite guys to watch in, in TNA. I don't. I have I, I have watched like I have seen when he first got to the WWE. I thought he was doing good because I was watching him in New Japan. Right. So I made sure to watch him when he first got to the WWE. Um, but. For the last few... And again, you know, I only see what I see. I only see so much, right. right? I see a lot of clips on, like, Facebook and Twitter. So it's not necessarily fair for me to have a full understanding of where they're going, where they've been, and where, and what they want to do. But at the same time, like, the last, like, two years, I really do find him to be a bland worker. Every single match he has, he does the exact same things. The exact same match. And I'm, I don't think I'm I don't think I'm interested in seeing this match. Oh wow! Yeah, I All don't right. think I am. Well, here we go. Um, Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins. No. No, and you know I always again um, I don't dislike Lesnar. I, I hate the fucking people that are angry that he only wrestles once every so often. That dude, he is fucking special. And you do realize like every time he comes back, the ratings spike. He's just. That's the whole point. You're supposed to be so fucking angry at him that every time that he... You want him to lose the title and go to the UFC. Get the fuck out of wrestling. That is the point. Yeah. And he is... There is nobody in the business that's special anymore. Yeah. Nobody. Except him. Just let it fucking be. You know? Like, he is. He is a monster. There's no question about it. Um, yeah, it's like... This is the one guy they built as right. the guy that can't be beat. Just let it fucking happen, man. Let it be. He's not going to be around forever. He doesn't fucking like wrestling. You know, so just let it be. Seth Rollins, I loved him before he came to the WWE. I can't, there's nothing about him that you is. Th- do you think he's, so when we talk about corporate bitches, um, who do you think's really been molded into like the corporate face after John Cena? AJ, Rollins? I think Rollins, but I think AJ, AJ to me is much more of a corporate wrestler today. He is older than Rollins, and so that's why he will not be the face of the WWE. Ah. Because of his age. As great as he's... St- the shape that he's still in, and the shit that he's still able to go out there and do, and, and like I said, I think he's bland, but that doesn't mean that I don't think that his matches are, are talented. I don't think... It's, it has nothing to do with that. Um, everything he does is fantastic. His age is the reason why he is not... He can be the face of SmackDown, and I, and I think he'll actually go to Raw after yeah. WrestleMania. He can be the face of Raw, but he will not be the face of the WWE. 
Huh. That All is right. much more likely to be Rollins or, or, or Reigns. Okay. Um, Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston. I the match see... that has been talked about on social media for weeks. I want to talk about this after we get done talking about WrestleMania. Okay. Um, I want to see Kofi Kingston win the title. Yeah. So I, I, I will put this match in the I want to see pile. Simply be not. I don't really even care for the the match all that much. Not that I don't think it'll be a good match. Um, There's more story than physicality. Right. The, the story is much more intriguing to me than anything else. Yeah. I think they've done a great job with it. I think it came out of nowhere because it was never planned. This this whole thing threw a wrench in Kevin Owens' plan. It, it threw a wrench in uh, Mustafa, Ali, Ali's. Mustafa Ali's plans. Um, so this all just kind of happened, and the way every fucking mark in the world, and I and I don't mean that to be derogatory, yet uh, it, it is it, absolutely it. in this situation. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think the the story has been absolutely fantastic. I think Daniel Bryan is a heel. I've listened to almost, I believe, every one of his uh, promos, in ring promos, yeah. since he became a heel. It's fucking good. Yeah, I like him as a heel. I like the way he. I, I like that he is on top of any fucking hypocrisy he could have said. Yeah. And he's got a reason for it. Right. You know, I like that uh, he comes out with a hemp belt that everyone <laughs> shits on because it's ugly. That's the fucking point. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. I like the story and I like everything going on. So um, put yeah, that in I, I have to agree with you there. You know, I've seen all the, I you know, everyone's seen social media ever uh, since Kofi was... A lot of Kofi fans came out of the woodwork over here. Well, let's talk about that app because I want to go deep into that. Because I've got, I want to ask you a very serious question about us as quote unquote, you know, as people in the business. Yeah. And then the average fan. Yeah. I want to, I want to discuss this. So let's run down the rest of the card. All right. I'm going down here. Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio for the United States Championship. You know, this is so I watched. the Truth win the title? Yeah. I watched The Truth... Didn't he defend it once? Yeah, he defended it once. And then I watched The Truth lose the title. Yeah. I wish... I wish... And I know this is stupid. I wish this was Rey Mysterio. And our truth Versus our truth <laughs> Versus Samoa Joe versus Andrade. Yeah. Like that I, is what yeah. I wish that I this mean, match been, was. Yeah, because they've been building this whole Rey with, Mysterio and Andrade thing for the longest. With our truth going into Mania as the champion. Yeah. That is what I wish... Because I thought that he was fucking funny. Yeah. This dude is... Like, this is another dude that is almost 50 years old, man. Yeah. You would never know. You would <laughs> never know. I mean, he might be a little bit slower. Looks like he's thinner. Yeah. Um, But, dude, he looks incredible. Yeah. And he looks the same way as he looked when he lived in Hermitage, Tennessee. Yeah. And, my, and our kids played at the fucking park together. Yeah. He looks the same. <laughs> Good old K-Quick, brother. Yeah. You know, he looks awesome, man. And he's funny. Yeah. Um, and he's not... A lot of... He's done a lot of things, like the little Jimmy thing. Yeah. I didn't like that. I mean, but here, there's a lot of corny, hokey shit that he's done. But for some reason, it this just shit... just still gets the, over. The John Cena thing? Yeah. The, 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 for some reason, that works with me. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. What would John Cena yeah, do? Yeah. For some reason, that I, I like that shit. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, but Joe versus Ray. Apparently, also, according to this note here, Mysterio's son, Dominic... Who we've seen on WWE TV before back in the day is who is training to be a wrestler and has made some recent backstage TV appearances will be sitting ringside. So he, he's, uh, I guess he's ready to be on TV. I guess so. What do you think of the match? Do you want to see this match? I think it, it, it's an intriguing match for me because you know I haven't seen a whole lot of Rey Mysterio. I've uh-huh. seen I've seen the stuff with Andrade, uh-huh. but that's been the only thing I've seen. I want to see what he's like with like a guy that's bigger uh-huh. and like obviously there's gonna be a lot of heat. Because Samoa Joe's bigger, right? But I, th- I just want to see like how that plays out. I want to see how this Dominic thing works out. Like if that's going to play a part into it, because that's kind of got me a little intrigued in what Dominic can do if he can do anything. He's, he's, I mean, there's there's no way from if they if they if he is being announced. Yeah, he's definitely going to get involved. Oh boy, is he going to turn on his dad? Oh, <laughs> Samoa Joe and ter- well, bro. Dominic turns on his dad. We'll put that in the medium, in the maybe. Yeah. I'll, I'll put that one in the maybe. Dude, uh, I see, I, I watched Rey Mysterio live yeah. at uh, MLLW in yeah. Memphis, Tennessee in 2017. 17? Yeah. Unfucking believable at how incredible of a worker he is. Yeah. It, it, it's just, again, someone who's, I mean, has multiple knee surgeries. 
who's been wrestling for probably close to 30 years now. Um, man, it just blew me. I was not expecting... I wasn't expecting to see him work right. as hard as he worked at this show. It was him versus Drago versus Pentagon. Yeah. Holy shit. In it front was, of what? Like 500 people? In front of like 500 people. It was fucking amazing. Yeah. It was so good, it blew me away. Yeah. Um, and Joe is also another just fucking incredible dude. Um, I'm going to put this in a maybe. I, okay. I don't know what kind of match they'll have with each other. Yeah. Um, this is one match I'll tell you I am not excited to see. I mean, I'm excited to see one person in it. Uh-huh. It's the four-way women's tag match for the tag team titles. Mm-hmm. It's the Boston Hug Connection versus... Uh, terrible name. Yeah, uh, well, I'm, I, again. <laughs> terrible name. Um, versus Beth Phoenix and Natalia versus the Iconics versus Nia Jax and Tamina. So I don't, I definitely don't. Uh, who is it you want to see? I want to see Beth because, like, Beth did great on Raw. Uh-huh. She competed in a match on Raw this past Monday, and she looked great. The week before that, she started, you know, wailing on people. Uh-huh. She's still got it, man. She's got the fans behind her too, because like the fans have been chanting, "You still got it" both weeks. So, and she's only been on TV for two weeks. Well, uh, so. I like Beth a lot. Um, obviously, this match is just is going to be. Obviously, the match is going to be terrible. It's going to be a close. Um, I like Beth a lot. Two, three years ago, I, I said that Bailey was the future of our fucking business, and uh, she's nothing. Sasha is nothing. Um, I fucking hate the Iconics. I can't stand uh, that, man. Oh, I, 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 I don't know. They're I, not good wrestlers, and their voices, <laughs> their voices are so god awful. I think that's the point, though. Oh, yeah. No, I'm sure it is. I'm sure they're. Uh, they're nice people. <laughs> I'm sure they're doing the voice on purpose. They're yeah. making it worse. It does. It's go home heat with me though. It's yeah. not. It's not like get off my TV heat. No, like, it's. I, it's I don't want you. I don't ever want to see you or hear you ever. Oh. You know. All right. Um, now we're getting into the. I believe the pre-show matches because I've been going off about this all the wrong way. <laughs> I'm always interested in the battle royals. Um, um, so both the oh, women's here, and the men's. Here we go. Uh, before we get to the pre-show, uh, Bobby Lashley and Finn, Demon Finn Balor. Yeah, the, no, I could give two shits about that. All right, good to know. Um, all right, and then the pre-show matches, I guess, of course, the Battle Royals, and then Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese for the Cruiserweight title. That'll be a great match. Yeah. I want to I want to. I want to see that. That'll that, be a really good match. See, the Cruiserweight matches, and this is after seeing the pre-show several times because I'm a mark and I watched all eight hours of the show. <laughs> um, the Cruiserweight matches have always been the ones I think that steal the show. Uh-huh. Like, there's this whole six hours of wrestling. Yet the pre-show match is what steals the show, and so I wonder if that's going to be the case this year, because yeah. it's always been the, either the cruiserweight match or the tag match, because I've always been in the pre-show, you know, of you know, the ones that steal the show. Right. So I'm really excited to see how that goes about. Um, I think Buddy Murphy has been a great cruiserweight yeah. champion. Yeah, I agree. Um, great representative for 205 Live. I think it's time for someone else though. Um, I, I don't have an opinion on who holds the title, but I think Buddy Murphy has just really been kicking ass. Yeah. And I think, and I and I don't even, I don't since I don't watch like any, I don't know how often Tony Nese is on TV or he's on just about every other week. But Tony Nese is awesome. Yeah. He is such a good worker, so it doesn't matter. The yeah. two of them are going to have you know an awesome match. Yeah. And I think that that's a great. It's a different match because you know we've seen a lot of Buddy Murphy and uh, Cedric Alexander. Uh-huh. We've seen a lot of Buddy Murphy and Mustafa oh, Ali. Cedric Alexander is a great guy. Yeah. A great wrestler too. Uh, absolutely. And then, but I think this is different. This uh-huh. is something that's intriguing because they're both they're supposed to be friends on TV, but the after Tony won the the tournament to become the number one contender. Buddy attacked him and all that stuff. So now Tony's got this baby face, you know, shine coming in. And plus it's in New York, where uh-huh. Tony's from. So that obviously means Tony's losing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong about that. Um, uh, but So that that's a match I want to see. Um, so going back to this, you know, whole fan base with Kofi Kingston, like... Yeah, so, okay, so here's my question that I want to ponder to you, okay? Because I know that I am guilty of constantly saying, why... I miss, I miss when people could suspend disbelief. I miss when, when everyone knew that it was a work, but, the, but you didn't. They didn't tell you this on TV. They didn't talk about it constantly. We didn't discuss about how things are a work always. You know, like there was a time when, even in the '90s, like I knew that wrestling was a work, but when I sat down to watch it, yeah, you know, you I just, got, yeah. I got invested in it, right? right? I got, 
I got invested in it. Yeah. And I talk about all the time how I wish people would just fucking stop talking about all the bullshit they think they know. Yeah. And the inside but, stuff. But then they're... That's, but then... That's the also them suspending their disbelief. Right. Because this bullshit with the Vince McMahon... And Vince McMahon might be a racist. I don't know. I don't know him. Yeah. I don't know him. Yeah. Okay? I think of Vince McMahon the same way that I think of Trump. Yeah. He doesn't give two shits about the color of your skin. Yeah. He cares about what you can do for him. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And and Coffee Kingston is money for him right now. Right. Has always been enough money yeah. for him to re-sign him. Yeah. And enough but, money for those uh, bootios. But right now he's money. Now there was a completely different plan in place. Yeah. That didn't involve Kofi Kingston. Okay? So before that got before Ali had that injury. <laughs> Kofi Kingston was never going to be a part of this match. So people shouldn't be fucking so out, outraged that he didn't win the fucking match. That doesn't make sense to me. He was never even part of it, which means he has not been going in a main event storyline all this time to all of a sudden win the title. Right. So basically they needed another athletic guy that could do flips like Mustafa yes. in that gauntlet match. And they did that gauntlet match and he got over amazing. Because which changed he, yeah. everything. Because they did the same thing that they were going to do with Ali because they were building up Ali like to be this underdog right. that's been fighting through it all and you know that he could end up being this big guy, this big name. Right. That he just came up from 205. Right. And now he now he could be this big name because he's he beat Daniel Bryan like in his first week. So, so exactly right. And so they obviously saw that, right? Yeah. They obviously said, okay, we need to do more with this guy. We need to now put him in this in this spot, in this main event spot, and the whole time that they're doing this, people are fucking bitching. Yeah. They're bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching. While they're literally doing what the fans want them to do. Yeah. This is the one time, right? Yeah. They never they never listen to the fans. They never do what the fans want. Yeah. And but like, for some reason, the fans made noise, and the WWE is listening. <clears throat> I do think that he's going to win the title on, at WrestleMania. And if he doesn't, I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah. I think he, this, is my, <laughs> this is my opinion. I mean, I love, I've loved Kofi's work. Um, sure. I've never been yes. the biggest fan of Kofi. Sure. Um, I'm but kind I, of the same way. Yeah, but I love the New Day, and I love the gimmick that they have. I've never liked the New Day. I, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> but I, but I, I know what you're saying, yeah. and I agree with you. I've always thought he was a good worker, never really a giant but fan now, But now he's had this chance to kind of shine a little bit. Like, after, because I remember in 2009 when he was a big name. Uh-huh. And, like, you know, he's in that whole deal with Randy Orton, and then that got, got kiboshed, of uh-huh. course. But now it's 2019, and... Kofi's now got a basically a career resurgence per se. Yeah. And now people and, and, and now people are getting behind him again. But I also think it's kind of unorganic. Right. Because, you know, you've got if you weren't a fan of Kofi Kingston before, what made you a Kofi Kingston fan now? Right. Because all of a sudden all these Kofi Kingston fans came out of the woodwork. Right. And right. Like, you know, oh I, I never said I was a Kofi Kingston fan until now. Like why not? Right. Like what? What kept you? Well, from yeah. And so my question to you is: What the? Are we the same? Are we the same fickle people that these fans are? Because we want them to fucking believe. Then yeah. when they do believe, then we're upset. We're upset that they believe. Because uh, then, because now I find myself where before I'm like telling people like you know when, you know how you know how it is yeah when you're in these fucking mark groups yeah. And you spend all day, and you don't say shit, and yeah. then you see that one comment, and yeah. you gotta fucking say something, yeah, right? Yeah, right. So, before, I would spend my day saying, why can't you just fucking, either don't watch WWE, Yeah. like, I don't bitch about WWE, because I just don't watch it. Right. Or, if you're gonna watch it, fucking just let it fucking, just watch it. Yeah, but na- but then that's where you shoot yourself in the foot now, because I, mean, I see what you're saying. And now, I'm sitting here saying, it's a work, people! Yeah. But, that, here I am, I'm the one that wanted them to believe. Yeah. You're the, yeah, because yeah, uh, there's a lot of people, of course, there's a lot of real life, you know, drama, per uh-huh. se, that they're kind of throwing into the hat here. Right. But I think that's the best part about it, because that's where the line is blurred. Right. You don't right. know, like, and there's very rare times where you can blur that line anymore. I think this is one of them. And I think that's a great thing that's been added to this story, is because no one knows Vince McMahon. Right. No one right. actually knows him. So no one knows what his genuine thoughts are of people. And whether he is a racist or not, yeah. I think it's a great thing to incorporate in the story. And then, of course, you got Big E doing that promo from his hotel room where he's like, people like us, quote-unquote, uh-huh. people like us can only go so far. 
So what does that well, mean? Well, there's, ob- it's yeah, there's obvious that they are. They're trying to. They see tread it. that line. They're they, tre- yeah, they're they treading see that line, it, and so they're going to play into yeah. it, which they should. Uh, uh, because but, it's already out there. Yeah, because I think the people like us is meant for a different, you know, it's meant sure. for a different theme. It's meant for, like, people who work hard and don't get what they want. Well, it can be used either way. Yeah, exactly. That's it, what I'm saying. They're yeah. treading that line. Yeah. And so, I, like I said, I think that's been the most beneficial part to this story is that there is no understanding of Vince McMahon. Right. So everyone thinks they know Vince McMahon. So everyone believes. And honestly, I'm a fan that... That believed in this whole deal. Uh-huh. I, I I can't lie. They've got me stirred into the mix. Like, oh, come on, Vince. Why don't you just let him do it? Right. I catch myself doing that during these shows that I know are a work. That right. I know there's obvious plans to get Kofi Kingston to that main event spot. But every week it's just like, oh, just give it to him already. Right. Seriously. Right. You know. So. so, yeah. So, I thought I would discuss my own hypocrisy because, uh. I, I'm I'm the one that's constantly bitching about that, and then now I, I am bitching about the exact same fucking thing that I wanted everyone to fucking do in the I, first place. I think, I think it's just because social media is such an outlet. Right. People like continue to use it to air their grievances, right. and so it gets <laughs> it gets kind of annoying. Right. And so you're just like, hey, motherfucker, it's a work. Get on with your day. <laughs> but but back in the day, if you think about it, oh well, there, there was a I remember Livewire. Yeah, and people can yeah. call in and air their grievances sure. about what's sure. going on, you know. I um, remember that show well. And so, like, you know, there's just a, it's just a different outlet now, and it's different than what's been in the past. You know, people that believed in the past they just believed and never said anything. Now you have a way to say something, and so now everyone can be heard, which right. is annoying. <laughs> yeah. um, and I mean, that's the only reason. I mean, what the fuck are we doing right now? I know. Literally right now. We are podcasting, we are podcasting to, the, to the masses. Giving people our, our opinion. Yeah. And who the fuck are we and why does it matter? <laughs> um, and then you got people, and then I know this pisses you off to the fullest, is when people talk about AEW. Well, here's the, it, it doesn't. What? Okay, so like the same way that I am about WWE, I don't, I don't care for WWE. Yeah, it's not my deal. It's not my product. Okay, but I'm not gonna let someone just blatantly just bullshit about it. First of all, if you're complaining about it, don't watch it. Right. That, that's what I'll say about anything. Um, if you don't like fucking The Walking Dead, don't watch it. Why would you watch it and then complain about how much you dislike it? And that's the way I feel about the WWE. Right. And uh, and the WWE is a profitable company. Of they course. are making so much money right now. It, I I I hate the bullshit. The Tony Khan is going to put Vince McMahon out of business. Yeah, it's not, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It just, man, dude. Like maybe it will, but it ain't going to ca- happen tomorrow. It's yeah. just not. The AEW hopefully is a fantastic, enormous, giant success, but it is nothing right now. And I don't care what anyone says. Until it is something, it is nothing. That's right. all there is to until, it. Until Double or Nothing is done, it is nothing. It's even that. It, I mean, I hope after Double or Nothing, they're like, hey, here's our plan. Right now, the plan is run Double or Nothing, run one show, run all in two. That's it. Yeah, there's three That's spot three shows. three total... Sh- is it three spot shows? Yeah, so there's, there's Double or Nothing, uh-huh. there's Fight for the Fallen in Jacksonville, and then there's uh, all in two. Yeah. So three That's shows. It. Three total shows coming up. In one year. Yeah. Until, I mean, obviously. So, I hope I, all I those think, shows are successful. I think there's obvious plans for television. No, 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 no. Uh, there, there has to. Uh, yeah. They, they, they hired Jim they Ross. Didn't, they didn't. Well, but he's going to be uh, talent relations. But uh, they didn't. They're not sinking all this money in. Right. They're not, putting, they're not creating contracts. They're not branding. They're not doing all these things to run a random show here and there. Yeah. There is obviously that they have ideas and plans. That doesn't mean the plans are going to happen. It doesn't mean that the plans are going to happen the way they have planned it out. Yeah. It, there's Right now, we don't know anything. Yeah. We just don't. And so it's okay to be excited for it. I'm excited for AEW. Yeah, there's a lot of, but there's just a lot of overhyped uh, but, speculation. And that kills it. That, that, that makes me less likely to give a shit about it. Right. Because people are just talking shit for no... Like, like here's uh, why, my do you biggest, want WWE to go out of business? Like, here's my thing. Like, okay, WWE, multi-billion-dollar company. Right. J- Tony Khan and the Khan family, multi-billion-dollar family. Vince McMahon's worth plenty of billions of dollars. J- Tony Khan and them worth plenty of billions of dollars. They're equal. They're equal in a sense. Both of them run businesses that are multi-billion dollars. 
But the problem is that Tony Khan has never run a wrestling show. Right. And Tony Khan has never run a wrestling business. Vince McMahon has run wrestling for years. Um, is this, does that mean anything? Maybe, maybe not. But I don't see AEW putting WWE out of business, nor that being even their goal, really. Right. And I mean, dude, do you, I mean, I didn't want WCW to go out of business. Well, I, I mean, I don't think. I didn't want ECW to go out of business. Yeah. I don't want Impact to go out of business. I don't want WWE to go out of business. They employ hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in our industry. Yeah. Just think about, like, all, outside of the wrestlers. Think about all the people that work in that office. Right. If WWE closes. Right. They all have families. Yeah. You know, I mean, and this is my industry. Yeah. I, there, I want opportunity and jobs. I mean, I don't want people to be out of work. Like, right. I just, shit like that bothers me so much because it's like, uh, great, be a fan. Be a fan of pro wrestling. Be a fan of only AEW. Be a fan of only WWE. But don't fucking wish bad shit on our industry, you know, because of your fandom. That's not okay. Right, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's, of course, people that say, oh, well, TNA is going to go out of business in another three months. I mean, it, that's no, I mean they've been saying that for <laughs> the last 16 years. Yeah, so um, much props to everybody that's involved with wrestling and involved with Mania Weekend right now. Um, of course, lots of things going on. If you haven't already, check out all the independent wrestling that's going on on your Fight TV app, on your independentwrestling.tv. High spots. Yeah, look, look in all of that. Um, enjoy if you if you really just don't care about WWE right now watch independent wrestling and support yeah, independent exactly. wrestling exactly yeah that's all you gotta do um, speaking of let's run down everyone's uh, list of dates Kevin uh, well let's see let me pull up my camera we are on our way right now to Franklin Kentucky for a AWA New South um, well, the main event is Justin Granberry taking on uh, the the new standard in professional wrestling, Sean Hurley. The new standard, is that the, what they're for saying? The, for the, uh, what is it, the Alliance Championship? Yes, the Alliance Championship. And um, Chase Stevens is defending his heavyweight oh, title. that's right, against Chris Phoenix. Yep, uh, both of them, longtime friends and enemies, um, former friends in high school, because uh, they both were went to the same high school, both enemies now because they hate each other's guts. They're going to war tonight with the heavyweight title on the line. And you can watch this show um, on WrestleTopia TV no, no, on YouTube. No, no, no. no. You, I've, I've just been going through Facebook here, and this is kind of just off the record here. Uh, yeah. Um, Richard Lowe has been doing some <sighs> weird stuff. It, it just lots of things have been strange over the last couple of weeks. Everything involving Damian Wayne has just been weird. He quit, um, and then it turned out that he had a five-match contract. He came back. Um he wrestled Francisco Chiazzo, and the ending of that match was very odd. Right. It, it was it was very odd. And then then you got Frankie. So now Frankie's going after Damien, but then Adrian Thomas has also been kind of getting to Damien for the past couple weeks now. Very odd with that. Um, and then but Richard then, Lowe but then gave with, him the, the night yeah, off. Yeah. So there's a benefit show on Sunday, like a fundraiser. Right. Right. And. Richard Lowe gave Damien the night off. Now, he says it's because... No, 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 no. He gave Adrian he gave the night Adri off. Adrian the night his, off. His opponent. Uh, why would you give his opponent the night off? Um, and then, I don't know if you watched the, the last episode of New South on, on WrestleTopia TV on YouTube, but at the very end of the episode, um, Carver is going back to the office, you know, to get all of his paperwork together and everything, and yeah. the door's locked uh, on the... On the, the, the office door. Yeah, our, our, the promoter of this entire, like, because let, let's just unblur the line a little bit. You know, James Carver is the promoter of New South yes. Championship Wrestling. Yeah. Richard Lowe is our commissioner. Yeah. He's the one that kind of makes the matches while Reno James Riggins handles all the business. Reno wasn't able to be at the shows every week. Yeah. And so Reno came to Richard Lowe. Yeah, yeah, but now, but now Richard Lowe went on this cruise. And not only did, and not only is it a crew he for, so he went all over Mexico right okay all of a sudden you know out of nowhere this this whole thing happened out of nowhere he just went on this cruise no one knew about it um, taking pictures all over Mexico and then I see and the reason why I said something on Facebook all right I tagged James Carver because I thought something was strange um, not only am I seeing him you know jet set through Mexico but then I see where he's already booked another cruise. In another couple of weeks. Another couple of weeks? Yeah. I thought it was like for like a n next year or something. No, I, I, uh, I'm, another couple of months. Another okay. couple of weeks. Okay. It is later on in the year. What What the fuck is going on? Uh, look, I, I mean, my envelope's still coming. Is your envelope still coming? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but I, I mean, I, here, it's, it's, I, I kind of want to give Richard the benefit of the doubt. Sure, sure. 
Sure. Maybe he's just doing, maybe he had a little extra money and he, he's going on these cruises because he's treating himself for how great he's done. Because the, the crowd's been great. Right. The crowds have been great over the past few weeks. And I even said in my post, I said, you know, maybe I've been sitting around watching too many Flat Earth conspiracies on, on Facebook, or on uh, YouTube, I don't know. But I, I certainly don't want to paint an inaccurate picture. All I said was, I just find it strange. Yeah. With and, all of the weird things. And But he says tonight he's going to address it to all right, of us. Right, right. You know, you know, whether that's in a backstage meeting or that's in front of the crowd like he likes doing. Um, we're gonna. I guess we're gonna find out tonight. So, I guess we'll find out on. If you want to find out, yeah. I mean, obviously you can check it out on WrestleTopia TV because it'll be aired by now. But uh, I guess we got some fun stuff ahead of us tonight. Um, then next week. Yeah. So tomorrow night, uh, I'm pulling up my schedule here yeah. because I have such a packed schedule apparently. Um, tomorrow I am in Walling, Tennessee. <laughs> Uh, the I've never heard of this town until like three weeks ago when I was pursued about the booking. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll go to Walling, Tennessee. Uh-huh. Um, it's presented by Tennessee All Pro Wrestling. Um, it's a free event, so if you want to go out there. If you live I anywhere guess, near Walling, Tennessee. Yeah, go check that out. Um, and then, of course, next week, it's a tried and true pro weekend. Oh, hey. Um, I'll be working with them in Impact Wrestling. Uh, in Fort Campbell on the Army base. Hell yeah. Yeah, we're doing a special salute to the troops special event. So you For the military? Yeah, for the military. It's a free event for the military. Uh, it's also a free event for the fans. Oh. A lot of people didn't know about this, but it's a free event for the general public. We do have tickets still available. You just have to go follow the directions on tridentruepro.com to get your tickets because you have to go through a whole background check and all that fun stuff because it's an Army oh, base. On the Army base. Yeah. Right. Um, but there's that. And then the following night, uh, Saturday night, next Saturday, April 13th, it is a mega card of, like, no other. You'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be it there. Is, and, and, and later on, me and you, I want to discuss this on the podcast later. Yeah. Because as you know in the wrestling business, dots you got to dots attach themselves. Yeah. And sometimes when you speak out loud, some of those dots fizzle away. Yeah. And so you don't want to do anything that's going to uh, create unwanted attention. Right. Or... Absolutely. So, uh, but what we, we will have to discuss this whole, yeah, but so whole basically, thing. But yeah, but basically, guys, if you want to come check it out, it's next Saturday night. Um, I've got a little bit of a of promotional tactic in this, I guess. Um, it's going to be a big super show. It's called Super Showdown, featuring stars from Tennessee All Pro Wrestling, Mayhem Wrestling, and Sideshow Wrestling. Wow. Uh, it's a triple triple uh, partnership here. Um, you're going to see stars like WWE's uh, Billy Gunn. He's from, no, 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 no. AEW's uh, Billy Gunn. But he's a WWE Hall of Famer. After after this after tomorrow, right, right. So WWE Hall of Famer, badass Billy Gunn will be out there. You're gonna see Impact Wrestling's James Storm. You're also gonna see AEW's Brandon Cutler, who is trained by the Young Bucks. He'll be out there. You're gonna see Ring of Honor's Corey Hollis. You're gonna see stars such as Corey Prince, Christian James, Justin Granberry, the Carnies, the Carnies, Gregory McDaniel, Brandon James. And many more. Commander so, Van Dan. Van Dan, Mr. Brickster, O'Shea Edwards from Southern Underground Pro. So, guys, this is going to be a card that you are not want to miss. It is stacked from top to bottom. All seats are only $10. This will be an interesting and incredible night. And let's talk about earlier that day what we get to do because yeah. I'm really looking forward to this. And so, I mean, you're a cigar smoker. Yeah. So, I don't know if you're going to actually get one. <laughs> but uh, American Rebel. I C- hope so. <laughs> American Rebel Cigars. Uh, is doing a special event. It's called Smoke and Mirrors uh, in Nashville at the Nashville Palace. You're going to see Cody Rhodes and Kazarian. They will be over at the uh, event. You'll also see Scorpio Sky, uh, possibly an appearance from Christopher Daniels if he uh, comes around with his SCU friends uh, friends and buddies. Um, It's a special meet and greet with Cody Rhodes and Frankie Kazarian. You also get to uh, buy cigars. You also get to get photo ops. You get to be a part of a special Q&A. So make sure you get in on that. More information can be found out at AmericanRebelCigars.com. I think that's uh, going to be a very fantastic yeah. way It'll to spend an fun. afternoon. That uh, is earlier that day, and then yeah. we have the Super Show yeah. that night. So from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., you got the American Rebel Cigars event with Cody Rhodes and Kazarian. And then that night, Super Showdown featuring Billy Gunn, James Storm, Brandon Cutler, and many more, plus a few surprises 
that are up the sleeves of all the promoters involved. And then uh, also that night, that same night, if you are in the Knoxville area or uh, Olive, is it Olive Springs? Oliver, uh, I think it's Oliver Springs, Tennessee. Oliver Springs, Tennessee. MSWA, our friends over there are having a kick-ass show, a big fundraiser for a high school out there. Uh, make sure you check out MSWA on Facebook and, and, and Twitter. Um, Crazy Steve, uh, Johnny, I think Johnny Swinger. No, he's on the May 4th show. Um, Crazy Steve, Luscious Lawrence, uh, Ox Harley is going to be back in action. So Big Bad John. Big Bad John. Uh, that'll be a really uh, Kevin Weatherby's going to be there. Yep. That'll be a really good show. Um, Rebecca Reese. Yeah. Um, and then later on in uh, in May, we've got Pro Wrestling Entertainment. Yeah. Pro Wrestling. Big Strawberry yep. Slam. Yeah. That'll be Saturday, May fourth at the Portland High School. Jeff Jarrett, Doug Gilbert. Um, who else is going to be? Crazy there? Steve. Crazy Pro Steve. Wrestling Entertainment Champion Alex Taylor, which the, is a phenomenal talent. Absolutely. The War Kings will be back in action. So make sure you get your tickets. Pro Wrestling for all your information and tickets about the Strawberry Slam in Portland, Tennessee, which is about about 30 minutes outside of Nashville, uh, make sure you go check that out. It's Saturday, May 4th. Again, ProWrestlingENT.com for more information and tickets. Uh, I'll and be that, that same night. MSWA is ha- also having a show in Rockwood, in Rockwood Tennessee. Yeah, make sure to find They're out more information there. They're having a big May there. the 4th show. Yep. Um, and then we also have an anniversary show with Oh, New South. Yes, yes that's how can up we too. ever forget April the 19th. April the 19th, Friday night, April 19th, which is two weeks from now. You can see a special third anniversary event uh, at Live at the New South Arena in Franklin, Kentucky. Uh, you're not going to want to miss it. All seats are only $8 for that show, man. You're going to see guys like Chase Stevens. You're going to see guys like uh, Chris Phoenix, Jason Is Tracy Kane. Smothers coming that night? I, I don't know. I've, I've heard some rumblings. Possibly so. Uh, you're going to see also some very special inductions into the New South Legacy Hall of Fame uh, so make sure we're actually going to find out those uh, award winners tonight. So you'll be finding out more information on that very soon. And um, then the very we are going to jump in a car. Oh boy! Uh, we are going to leave Franklin, Kentucky, on the uh, 19th, and I, we're going to drive nine hours uh, to Fort Wayne, Indiana, for the big uh, Francisco Chiazzo and Stormy Lee Journeyman Premiere event taking place at Heroes and Legends in Fort Wayne, Indiana. If you are around there, if you're planning on going to that convention, they've got Kevin Nash, they've got Jerry Lynn, uh, a host of, of Legends of the Ring and current day superstars going to take place at Heroes and Legends Fort Wayne, Indiana on April the 20th, 420. Yep. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a fun uh, yeah. trip. Anyways, it's going to be a big convention uh, before the show, and then you'll see a big wrestling event after the show. But there's a whole bunch of us that are going. Yeah. You know, it's going to be me. It's going to be you, Stormy Lee, uh, Frankie, Chase Stevens. The Memphis Kings are going. They are, they're going. Um, our uh, James Carver may be jumping in the oh, car. Oh, boy. So uh, what? Uh, this it's, SUV. The Murphys. Is the Murphys Brothers going? I, I'm not sure. I think, I think they are. I think but they're also the, booked. The, hold on now. Are they all in this SUV? No, 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 okay, no, no. Okay. We're all taking separate. Oh, okay. It's going to be a caravan, though, uh, brother. It's uh, going to be a caravan. I was about to say, if we're all in this SUV, I'm a, <laughs> I'll am i probably just uh, catch a Greyhound, brother. Um, but, no, in all seriousness, though, it's going to be an action-packed weekend that weekend. I cannot yeah. wait. It's going to be so much fun. Nine hours on the road with J.D. Sloan. So you can expect <laughs> at least three of those hours to be occupied with a podcast of us uh you know, bitching about the traffic on the way up there. Uh, it's very exciting times ahead. Uh, yes. Make sure uh, you check us out. Facebook.com slash number one yes. WrestleTopia. The number one. Yeah, number one WrestleTopia. WrestleTopia TV on YouTube. Yep, WrestleTopia TV on Pivot Share. Uh, thank you for joining us this week on the Tape Trader's Guide to 90s Pro Wrestling, which I we I don't think me and you have ever discussed tape trading we, at all. We, well, we should, you know. I mean, you don't even know what fucking tape trading is, do well, you? N- I, know, I mean, you, you know what it is, but you don't have a, I, a... I don't have experience in it. Yes, you don't have experience in it. It was such I have a more, glorious... I'm DVD trading. <laughs> it was such a glorious time in everyone's life, and, you know, the, the sky was a little bit bluer at the time. The grass was a little oh bit greener. Um, you know, it was... <laughs> It was a great time. Um, I'm, I'm about to get some tape trading shirts uh, done up. Oh, boy. Uh, it, it's, they're, they're super pimp shirts. They're going to be of old VHS tapes with some incredible uh, events, you know, written on the labels on the outside. And the bottom is going to say WrestleTopia. Um, it, 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 it looks great. It's going to be great. They'll, they'll be available very soon. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. We will, uh, we will definitely be sure to do this again on our trip to... Uh, the dealings with uh, the Tap Super Show. Yep. Um, 
that sh- I'm expecting that to be a lot of fun and, right. and kind of crazy, right? Yep. Wrestling is crazy in itself, brother. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kevin Martin. That's J.D. Sloan. We'll see you next time.